Hey, this is Jeff Corrett. In this video, we're going to be looking at Soda Poppin and seeing how did Soda Poppin get famous. Let's get right into it. Um, the reason we're doing this is because we want to see if we can reverse engineer some of his success. And by the way, if you don't know who Soda Poppin is, he is one of the top Twitch streamers. Getting over 20,000 views at a time is like no big deal. Um, you know, this video, this is one of his recent VODs. The VOD alone has almost 7,000 views. Um, and so, yeah, let's look into his trajectories to success and see what can we learn? How did he get famous? And uh, how can we try to replicate some of that success uh, for anybody who wants to do a Twitch stream? So... First, we're going to be looking at when did he start streaming? And I think that's one of the most important things to look at. So this particular page, and I don't know how accurate this site is. It doesn't look very uh, trustworthy, but it says that he started streaming in 2011. Now, one thing notable is that Justin.tv, of course, anybody who has been following it, um, Justin.tv became Twitch in 2014. So Twitch didn't even exist before 2014 or it did as Justin.tv. But Twitch didn't exist in its current format. So this guy actually predates the switch from Justin.tv to Twitch, which is something that, you know, some of the oldest streamers, um, you know, that could be said about any of them. And, and there's certainly a handful of unsuccessful people who can say that. But interestingly enough, this guy actually, I think, predates Justin.tv. So Look at this. He launched his, he launched, he started streaming in 2011. This says, I don't think Justin.tv was really a thing back then. And look, this says he started on Xfire. So this guy, I think was one of the very first people to ever stream video games, period. So, um, basically what this tells us, he was one of the first people like he, you know, he saw the future of live streaming video games and he went all in back when, you know, it wasn't like, you know, there was no, there was no ninja story in the mainstream of somebody who had like really, really uh, had success with their life and with their, with their money situation. Like Soda Poppin went all in early and look, currently he's 25. If he started in 2011, that would have made him about 17 year old, 17 years old. So he actually started when he was. Uh, still a child or, or before he reached the age of 18, according to these numbers. So that's cool. So, you know, I, I tell kids, start a business when you're early. And, and Twitch streaming definitely is a business, I think. Uh, start a business when you're young. You're still living with your parents. And, like, if you fail, it's okay. And uh, it looks like it looks like he did just that. So that's awesome. Um, but let's let's take a look at some of his stuff. This is his his Twitter. Uh, we see that he has 500,000 uh, followers on Twitter. Um, one of the one of my favorite tools for evaluating Twitch success here is uh, this is Sully Gnome. And when we click when we go to somebody's page and we click long term, it'll it'll bring us all the way back to 2015. And even in July of 2015, he was averaging over 20,000 viewers at a time. So his success is definitely nothing new. Um, in fact. His trajectory to success predates most, if not all, of the Twitch and YouTube and Twitter statistics tools, such as Social Blade and stuff like that. So we can't even like follow his trajectory from zero to one, or from one to like a hundred, or from a hundred to a thousand. Like we can't even see that. That's how long this dude's been doing it. So, you know, kind of like some of his kind of looking at some of his stuff like yeah he is a successful world of warcraft player um i you know this his wikipedia page says he started in 2012 that would have put him at right at about 18 years old when he started and he was already like a very successful gamer at the time um i think there's some sort of and, and i'll be honest like i'm not the most familiar with this guy or with world of warcraft but uh it looks like um he he has won some uh, tournaments with World of Warcraft, some kind of PvP tournaments. So and that helps. That, that, I, I don't think being like a really good 
high professional quality gamer has ever hurt a streamer. It, it, it can only help you, right? Um, here is his social blade for Twitter. And when we go back all the way to, um, you know, late 2016 or mid late 2016, he was getting 131 followers a day these days. You know, it looks like he's getting about the same amount of like daily followers, if not less than he was in like in late 2016, the follower count. When this thing first started tracking, this is Social Blade. When it first started tracking him, 186,000. So, like, unfortunately, we can't really dig that deep on to see exactly, like, if there was some sort of big break or maybe a shout out from an established influencer at the time. Like, we can't really see whether or not that happened. Um, here we have his Twitch stats. And of course, as you might imagine, you know, this actually goes further back than, than the Twitter section. So we can see it. And November 14th of the year 24, oh, that's actually 2014, huh? Wow. And in, in the year 2014, he already had five, over 500,000 followers on uh, Twitter. I mean, Twitch and racking in 73 million uh, <laughs> video views, man, that's crazy. So he was, he was a smash hit. Literally, he was already a, uh, probably a star of Justin TV, one of the very top on Justin.TV before Twitch ever even existed. Or, uh, yeah, because I think Twitch didn't exist before they changed it to from Justin.TV to uh, Twitch. Here is his Twitch tracker, kind of the same thing. This only goes back to uh, 2017. Um, you know, we like to, we like to think that, um, people who have success have some sort of big break. Uh, that's not always the case. Maybe this guy just was one of the very first to ever stream. And he, because of that, you know, he just, uh, you know, uh, organically grew over time. So when we look at, uh, you know, here's the twitchmetrics.net, kind of the same thing. You know, it only goes back to like. 2014. I, and anybody out there watching this, if you know of any Justin.TV like stats tracker, let me know. I, I don't think any exist to like kind of dig into this legacy follower stats from, from the Justin.TV or maybe even Xfire to kind of see like how did things actually go in the early days? Like was there a time when Soda Poppin was, was streaming to zero, one or two or three viewers? Like most Twitch streamers are these days. And like was there some sort of tipping point when things just exploded or was it like just really, really fast organic growth? Like, like someone who got in on the early days of like TikTok or, or, or YouTube or, or Twitter or something like that or Snapchat or Instagram, the very, very early days, the early adopters who had really, really fast growth. Is that what this was? Because if you listen to guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, he's saying like, go all in on TikTok right now, go all in on, on LinkedIn because the, the attention is underpriced, meaning it's a lot easier to gain a following there because they're not yet saturated. So you can get in there and carve out your niche and be one of the first to do it. And then you can, you can get uh, a maximum amount of attention for the least amount of resources. It's, I'm thinking that is the case here. So um, really nothing else to say. He was one of the earliest to, uh, to go all in on live streaming video games, and, and, and I think that's why he's been successful. Um, let me know if you have any other thoughts or questions. If you found value in this, if you found this interesting, please consider a subscription. And uh, go ahead and like the video so more people can see it. Uh, other than that, looking forward to seeing your comments, and enjoy the rest of your day.